There's a long-standing problem in science education. It may be a problem in other fields as well, but particularly in science education where um, standard stories, a peppered moth, let's say, uh, or Heckel's embryos, take on a life of their own in textbooks and they diverge from the actual evidence. And because of the way the textbooks are written, and really what happens is one textbook ends up sort of being copied from another. These standard stories uh, become widely promulgated and accepted, and in fact, they're out of touch with the actual evidence. And what Jonathan saw, what he understood, his main insight was, we need to fix this. We need to take these standard stories back to the evidence, you know, close this distance between the data and what is present in evolutionary biology or biology textbooks. Because science doesn't stand still. Discoveries are made and something that might have looked true 100 years ago or 50 years ago turns out not to be the case. So his great insight, his inspiration was, let's bring these stories back into hailing distance of the actual data and, and find out what the actual data tell us. When he told me this, I remember, this is before the book was even written, I thought, you know what, that's a great idea. And, and Jonathan said, and I'll call them icons, because that's what they are. That's using the term icon, of course, in a pejorative sense, as a kind of quasi-religious emblem, if you will, that is not supported by evidence. So I knew right from the start, when Jonathan had this idea, that this book was going to make a big difference and I think it has made a big difference. Um, it's taught people that what they see in a textbook needs to be viewed with skepticism if that story, if that idea, that icon, if you will, uh, has not been grounded in evidence, which is where science has to go in the end. It has to go back to the evidence, that they need to be cautious about accepting its, its veracity. Um, so I knew, and he said, I got this idea for a book that it was going to you know, do very well. Uh, frankly, I did not correctly anticipate the response. I thought people would say, biologists who write textbooks, for instance, you know what, he's right, and uh, this is an important corrective. In fact, the response was much more hostile than I would, have e would ever have guessed. I think in part because what Jonathan was doing uh, in the eyes of many of his critics was telling tales out of school. That this kind of dirty laundry, to use that metaphor, should not be aired in public. These sorts of problems, yes, they're there, they're in the textbooks, but we should fix them without letting the public know. And, uh, you know, quietly clean up the mess. What Jonathan did was, was to say to the reading public who care about this, you need to know that Biology textbooks have been really dishing out inaccuracies, severe inaccuracies for a long time. Well, that kind of information tends to make people very mad, both in the sense that, well, my kids learn that and it's not true. I wish I could redo their biology education. That's one kind of anger. But another kind of anger is by telling the public that there's something wrong with textbooks, you're giving them reason to doubt the whole evolutionary enterprise, and that's not right. So the hostility to, to, to Jonathan's book, I think, flowed mainly from the sense that he was putting out in public dirty laundry that ought not to have been presented that way. Um, my own feeling is when you've got a problem like this that needs fixing, you might as well do it where everyone can see. Be honest about the problem, that if you are an author who has used a Heckel's embryo diagram, or if you are an author who has told the standard Miller-Urey story, you know, that they synthesized life and so forth, that you need to be responsible for what you've told people. Uh, textbook authors bear a heavy responsibility. What they're writing may be the only information that a student has about a field. So they need to be scrupulous about accuracy. And unfortunately, the, the writing of textbooks is like the making of sausage. You don't want to see it. You might never have another sausage. 
Um, and I think, I think that aspect of the book, you know, telling people what goes on as textbooks are assembled is very important.